To get started with this exercise, download the Basic Shapes folder and place it inside of your Art 317 folder that has your name on it. Inside of the Basic Shapes folder, you're going to find two different images. The first will be a Basic Shapes JPEG image. Now, if your Basic Shapes look slightly different from what I have on my screen, that's okay. All of the concepts we're going to cover for this exercise should apply to the image that you have. The other image you're going to have is a Basic Shapes reference photograph. We're going to refer to this reference photo so that you get an idea of how to place the shadows and forms for this particular exercise. Now let's set up our Photoshop document. If you jump into Photoshop, we'll go to File and down to Open and locate that Basic Shapes JPEG image. When you click Open, this is going to create a new Photoshop document that's the correct height, width, and resolution that we need to work on. The next thing we need to do is to open up our Layers panel. And if you don't see your Layers panel, you can always go to Window and choose Layers, and this should pop open. We want to place our reference images and our background shapes images in two separate artboards. So with the background layer selected right now, click on the Layer Options at the top right-hand corner and choose Artboard from Layers. This will ask you to give it a name, so I'm going to call it my Shapes. We'll keep the size of it at Custom. This will keep it the size of the actual document that we have. And when we say OK, notice now our background layer becomes Layer 0 and it's placed inside of an artboard named Shapes. Let's do the same thing for our reference image. This time, however, we'll go to File and do Place Embedded. And let's place the reference photo, so the Basic Shape Reference PNG. When we hit Place, this will ask you to size it up. So let's hold down the Shift key and click on the top or bottom corners to proportionally drag it larger. But when you're ready to place it and lock it in, hit the check at the very top of your screen, or you can hit the Return key on your keyboard. Now if we return to our Layers panel, notice that the Basic Shapes Reference layer is inside of the Shapes artboard that we have. We want to have a separate artboard for this one, so select that layer, click on the Layer Options, and choose Artboard from Layers. Again, it's going to ask you to give it a name, so I'm going to call this my Shapes References. And again, we'll keep it at Custom, which will give it the same height and width as this particular shape or object. When we say OK, notice now that the Shapes Reference has its own artboard and the Shapes has its own artboard itself. You can then use your Move tool, this is the double cross arrow, to click on your Shapes Reference layer and drag it off to the side. We want to be able to see our references off to the side and have our actual shapes that we're working on nice and clean and everything else out of the way. Since we're not going to be working on the reference image, let's go back to our Layers panel one more time. I'm going to collapse it down so I don't accidentally see it, and I'm also going to click on the Lock All icon to lock everything down so that I don't accidentally move it or draw on it or use it. Everything else we're going to be doing, I can select Layer 0 and work inside of my Shapes artboard. This is also a good time to save your file, so let's go to File and Save As. And make sure you're in the Basic Shapes folder that's inside of the folder with your name on it. You know where you're saving your files to. Since this first part of the exercise, everything's done in grayscale, add the word gray to the end of it and also add your name to the end of the file as well. We're going to keep everything as a Photoshop format and hit Save and then say OK to maximize compatibility. All right, now let's look at our layers and see how we can set them up to use the clipping mask technique to add the highlights and shadows to each of our forms. To do this, I'm going to start off with the circle. Select layer 0, and let's add a new layer on top of this. This is going to be our base color for our first shape. So with the new layer selected, double-click the name of it, and let's call it the layer. This will be our base for the sphere hit return. We need to select all of the white area inside of the circle and then fill it in with a solid base 50% gray. To quickly and easily select the circle, choose your magic wand tool. If you don't see it, it may be underneath your quick selection tool, but with this tool selected, look up at the very top for your tool options. 
make sure you're working in the uh, select normal mode, this first option, with point sample size selecting. Keep your tolerance relatively low, between 10 and 20, and make sure continuous and sample all layers is checked on for both of those. That's going to be very important. Now since we're working in our new layer, when you click once inside of the circle, you'll get a rectangular marquee inside of that area and everything is selected. To quickly and easily fill in that area with a 50% gray, you can go up to Edit, down to Fill, and this will ask you how do you want to fill it in. We've got a couple of options. Mainly, we want to change our contents, since we're working in gray for now, to 50% gray. We're going to keep our mode to normal and opacity at normal, and when we say OK, it'll fill that color in at 50% gray. We can now go to Select and Deselect it. Now let's create another layer to fill in our highlights and shadows. This new layer, we'll click New Layer, we'll make it on top of our base sphere. Let's double click this one to rename it, and this will be our Sphere Highlights and Shadows, H and S. Since this layer is on top of our circular form, we want this new layer to become our clipping mask layer. So to quickly and easily create that, click on the layer options at the top right hand corner, then choose create clipping mask. And notice that you get a little arrow pointing down to it. If you see this, this is correct. With this done, Anything that we paint inside of this new layer will automatically be clipped inside of our base, uh, base color layer that we have. Now let's test it out. Grab your brush tool, looks like a paintbrush. If you don't see it, it may be hiding underneath some of these other drawing and painting tools, but the regular brush is what we want. And if you go up to your tool options, make sure you have a soft, rounded, pressure-sized brush selected. All we want is a regular rounded one, and we'll change up the size as necessary, but make sure the hardness is set down to zero. Also, make sure you're working in drawing mode of normal. Set your opacity to 100 for now, and make sure your smoothing is set to zero and your pressure sensitivity is turned on for the size of it. You can keep the pressure sensitivity turned off for the opacity for now. With this brush selected, as you hover over it, it'll get an idea of what the size of the brush you're working with. I do recommend making it slightly larger, about a quarter of the size of the diameter of your, your circle. So something like this tends to work out, though you could make it a little bit smaller. Now, as far as the colors go, we could use either black or white and work in our different tones in order to fill this in. So if I wanted to fill in a shadow, I'm going to swap this over to have my foreground color be black and my background color be set to white. If I was to paint in now using my paintbrush, you can see it's 100% black. And because I'm working in a clipping mask, everything stays inside of that area. However, I'm going to undo this. I'm going to drop my opacity down to, let's say, about 40%. This is a good low opacity and it'll allow me to quickly and easily build up the shadows that I want. So very carefully and easily, give it a couple of swipes through, and then to add on more shadows, you can build up from there. If you don't like that, you can always do Option Command Z to back out. I'm going to drop my opacity down to 20%. That's blending in much, much better. And then follow and fill in the forms for this particular shadow shape. If you need to, this is what your reference is for. This will give you an idea of where to place your shadows and how they should be cast on your particular shape. In this case, the ball is relatively lighter than what we have with our ball. Let's add some highlights and see what we can do with that. I'm going to swap over to white as my foreground color. To add a highlight, simply click in the middle, and then paint outward until you get the form that's comfortably suited for your needs. The more you tap, naturally the lighter it's going to get until you get the shadow form that you want. Some other things to pay attention to from your reference is this reference does have some reflected shadows. So you can see this little highlight right down here. It's being reflected down here. And you may get some other little dimples or imperfections or slight other things that you can see. The main thing is I want you to follow the form that naturally fits for this one. If I wanted to add a little bit of a highlight, maybe add a touch, 
down here just a bit to pretend like there's some light bouncing off of that and you get a bounce shadow. With that done, now let's create a cast shadow for our sphere. If we go back down to our layers, since we got our highlights and shadows on top of our base sphere, our cast shadow needs to be below it. So let's click the layer below your base sphere, in this case layer zero, and create a new one. And again, we're gonna name it something descriptive. So this will be sphere cast shadow. We don't have to do any special clipping or anything to it, but with it selected, this is where we can do our cast shadow shape. Now, since this is casting a elliptical kind of shadow, we're gonna use our elliptical marquee to select out the area. You can find it nested underneath your rectangular marquee if you don't see it. And with this marquee, you can click and drag, and of course you get an elliptical shake. And if you hold down your space bar, you can move that shape around until you get the form and placement that you like. Just moving your mouse and your space bar together until you get something about like that. With that done, now let's select our paintbrush tool. I'm gonna to swap over to black as my fill color and I'm gonna drop my opacity down to about 10%. We're gonna build up that shadow very, very slowly. Now with this, I can use my paintbrush and we want our shadow to be darker as it gets closer to our circle and gradually get lighter as it moves away. Once you get the form that you like, you can go up to select and deselect that circle. Since it was selected, everything stays inside of it, so that's one quick and easy way of masking off an area. And if you wanted to, you could go back and feather out those edges as well. Now that we've finished up this particular shape, the last thing we need to do is to group all of them together in one folder. This is gonna make it much easier to tell each of your layers apart. So going back to our layers, hold down the Shift key and select all of the layers associated with this particular shape. We've got the highlights and shadows, the base and the cast shadow. Click on the little folder icon to group them all together. Notice they're called group one by default. Then you can double click it. Let's give it the group name of sphere. Now that we've finished the sphere, the rest of the shapes should have the basic same process that you can follow to add the highlights and shadows for each of their three dimensional forms. However, do pay attention that some of these shapes are a little bit more complex, and so it will require you to think about each of the different sides you're working on. The next one would be the cube. Let's go down to the layers and set up the layers for this cube. You can select layer zero and create a new layer on top of it. Now, for the base layer of this one, we want to select each of the different sides, and each one of those would have its own separate highlights and shadows. So for layer one, we're gonna double click it, and let's call this the right cube base. This is gonna be the base color for just the right side of the cube. So with that selected, we can go to our magic wand tool. It should still have the same settings as before, and so we can select the right side, and with it highlighted, go to edit, fill, and let's fill that area in with a 50% gray. You can then go to select and deselect that area. So now we just have the right side selected. This right side needs to have its own clipping mask, so let's make a new one on top of that. Double click to add the name, so this will be right cube highlights and shadows. And then go to the options at the top and create a clipping mask on top of it. Repeat this process for the top and the left side as well. So let's make a new layer. Double click this one, this will be the left side. Grab your marquee, click on the left side of it. You can go to edit and fill. Fill that in with 50% gray. And then return and add a clipping mask layer to that one. So this will be the left cube highlights and shadows and then create a clipping mask from that one. Finally, let's do it for the top. Create a new layer, change the name of it to top cube base color, get your rectangle marquee and select the top of it, go to edit and fill and fill that in with 50% gray as well. 
Lastly, return to your layers, create a new layer, and rename that Top Cube Highlight and Shadows. And then finally, convert that to a clipping mask. It's always a good habit to get into uh, naming each of your layers so you know exactly what it is. And that's what we're practicing with this particular object. From here, now that you've got your clipping mask for the top, left, and right sides of your cube, all you have to do is select the appropriate layer and paint inside of that clipping mask. Let's do the top of the cube first. So I've got the top cube highlights and shadows layer selected. I'll go up to select and actually deselect that. And now we can paint our highlights and shadows. Since I've got my top cube selected, let's look at the top of our reference. You can see it's very, very light, so there's really hardly any midtones whatsoever. So if I was to grab my paintbrush tool, I'm going to swap over to white as my fill color, and I'm going to set my opacity low to about 20%. Now when I start to paint, I can give it the highlight that it needs. Since the light's coming in from this top area, one side of it is going to be slightly lighter than the other side. So you can see it's gradually getting just a little bit darker, maybe just one or two stops darker from there. But it's not 100% black and it's still not any 100% gray. If we did the left side, let's do the same thing to that one. Go down to our Layers panel. Make sure you have the left cube highlights and shadows layer selected. Then when we choose our paint tool, we can paint it in. Again, getting, I'll make mine a little bit larger, slightly lighter on this top left-hand point and getting darker as it moves across and down to the other side. Finally, looking at our right side of our cube, you can see that it's very, very dark, and we can actually make it a little bit darker than what we have here. So I'm going to swap over my fill color to be black, and let's paint it in slightly darker. Uh-oh, I had the wrong thing selected. Again, make sure you got the layer selected. So choose your right cube, highlights and shadows. Now we can paint it in, and there's the shadow that's working with it. For this one, I've chosen to have a little bit of bounce coming off of my surface. So in this case, it's actually going to get darker in the top right hand, excuse me, left hand corner, and lighter as it goes down. At any point in time, I can always go back to my other highlights and shadows layers, and if I feel like I need to make them slightly darker or lighter, I can always go back in and add those in as well. Now, especially since I've got my shadow selected. Finally, let's add the drop shadow or cast shadow for this particular cube. If you look at our reference, this kind of cast shadow has a nice hard edge to it. And it's following along the hard edges of the cube. In order to get this particular shape, let's go to our layers panel. Again, our cast shadow needs to be below everything, so let's choose the layer that's below the base, create a new one, and we'll name this cube, Cube Cast Shadow. Inside of this layer, instead of using our rectangular marquee, we're going to use our Polygon Lasso Tool. You can find it hiding underneath the regular Lasso Tool. And with the Polygon Lasso Tool, this allows you to click and create straight line selections. In this case, since the light is being cast from this top left side, it needs to fall along this bottom right side. So we can click this bottom corner and go out and give it a rough basic shape that looks like this. Since it's overlapping this area, whatever I paint inside of it, it should still be covered up by the layers that are on top of it. Now let's grab our paintbrush tool and start painting in the shadows for this area. As with the other one, the shadows that are closest to our form are going to get slightly darker, and then they'll get lighter as they move outward. With the strongest, darkest shadows right up next to it. You can go up to Select and Deselect it to see that particular form now that it's finished. So, with this done, as with the sphere, the last thing we need to do is to compile all of our cube layers into one folder. So let's select all the different layers by holding down Shift. And with the cube layers selected, click on the folder. It'll group them together and double click the name of it and we'll call this cube. 
To finish out the rest of this exercise, I want you to fill out the highlights and shadows for each of the remainder of the shapes. Each of these three-dimensional forms should have their own layers for the highlights and shadows, their base tone, and also a cast shadow. And then when you finish with each of the three-dimensional forms, place all of the layers inside of their own folder and clearly label that folder. Also, don't forget to frequently save your document, so go up to File and Save. And again, this one should be the gray version of the basic shapes exercise. Also, make sure you got your name on that Photoshop document. This Photoshop document, along with all of the layers in the reference photo, is one thing you'll turn in for a grade. For the second part of this exercise, I want you to repeat the same process of setting up your document, but this time, instead of using just grayscale, using black and white tones, I want you to incorporate color into your forms, your shadows, and your cast shadows. You can see in my example for the sphere, I don't even just have one color, I've used two different tones. So I've got kind of a reddish pink going into darker blues for my shadows. Same for my cube, I've got yellows and greens and blues all mixing together to form out their different forms. But the process of creating this is exactly the same. I'm setting up my base color first, and it's not just a tone, it's a solid color. Then on top of that, I'm creating a clipping mask and adding my highlights and shadow forms. And then underneath that, I've got a cast shadow. As with the other one, you're gonna save all four of these. And this time when you go to File, do a Save As. Make sure not to save over your gray version of it, but we're gonna add the word color to it. Again, this will be a Photoshop file, and we'll say OK to maximize the format. And you'll be uploading those two files to Moodle, both your color and your grayscale for this particular exercise grade.